welcoming. Good morning again, everyone. Take your comfortable seat. We'll start with a few minutes of centering and breath awareness before we begin moving and warming up. So once you've arrived on your mat, gently close your eyes. Just let your palms rest in your lap. And turn your focus and attention inward to your body. Beginning just by noticing sensations. The sensation of your hands against the legs. Sensation of your ankles touching the mat. Scan through your entire body from head to toe. Just noticing what you're feeling and experiencing this morning. If you observe any places in the body that feel tense or held, like they're resisting the shape that you're in, just keep your attention there for a few moments. Breathe calmly. And see if you can just invite that place to soften and find some ease in this posture. Oftentimes, you might notice tension in the hip joints or the inner thighs. Often, it's in the shoulders and the back of the neck. a sense of ease into the body, letting go of any unnecessary effort while maintaining just the effort you need to keep your spine upright. Feeling how your lower and middle back work to support the posture. And start imagining your spinal column getting taller every time you breathe in. See if you can create a little more length through your upper body. And that might be a very subtle sensation, one that you might not even notice if you were looking at your body from a distance one that you can feel subtly. And then imagine your hip joints rooting down into the floor with every exhalation, rounding your lower body to the mat. And so often in our yoga postures, we have this balance between opposing directions of energy. So in sitting, sitting like this or standing in mountain pose, we have this upward direction against a downward direction. And 
And as we're practicing this morning, see if you can kind of notice these opposing energies in your body in every pose that we're in. Every shape may have a kind of push and pull in two opposite directions. And our goal is to balance those energies so that one doesn't overcome the other. And they're not always symmetrical. So thinking about warrior pose, for instance, there's always that deep bend in the front knee while the back knee is straightening the leg. But those two energies oppose each other. The front knee goes toward the front of the mat and the back knee goes toward the back of the mat. So try and remain in your body in every pose, looking for those energies and how you can balance that opposition so that you find a sense of equilibrium between those two opposing forces. Before we move, just take a minute here to connect with your breath. Just starting to gradually extend your inhalation and slow down your exhalation. Finding that deeper, more conscious breath that we use to coordinate with our movement. And the next time you inhale, come on back up. 
Good, let's come off of our support and into table pose on the hands and knees. And from here, we're going to come into a balance. Extend your right leg behind you, reaching straight through the knee. And left arm in front of you, extending that elbow, feeling these opposing energies of backward and forward, lengthening through the spine. The next time you exhale, put the hand down and then lunge your right foot forward in between the hands. You're welcome to put blocks underneath the hands here as well if you want. Let's slide the left knee a little farther back so we have a nice low hip position here. We'll just take a few breaths here in this lunge. Noticing how the hips feel this morning. And then on an inhalation, reach the arms forward and up, lengthening through the spine for crescent lunge. Drawing the arms back slightly, arching through the spine. On an exhalation, lean forward and place the hands back down. And then rock your hips back in space for our half split, trying to straighten the right leg. Pull the toes up so you're just pressing the right heel against the mat. You can move your hands or blocks a little farther back so they're more under your shoulders if that's comfortable. Just stretching through the right hamstrings. And on your next breath out, come back to your little lunge. Let's lift the back knee off of the ground, straightening the leg now so you're in a high lunge, getting really active there. And then we'll take a twist. Left hand down, rotate, and raise the right arm up. Good. On an exhalation, release the right hand back to the floor. And then we're going to twist to the other side. Rotate and raise your left arm up. Leaning back slightly. One more breath in. And exhale, release the left hand to the mat. And from here, step into plank pose. Bring the feet and legs together. Feel your shoulders in line right over the wrists. And take five steady breaths here. Staying strong through your abdominals and lower back. The next time you exhale, bend your elbows slowly lower to the ground. Point your toes and inhale, arch to cobra pose. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, press up to your knees. Exhale, rock the hips back and lift up into down dog. We're not going to be here very long. Just want to take some pedaling motion in the legs. So bend one knee as you reach the opposite heel down. And rock the hips side to side. Just waking up the back side. The lower body. Good. And then bring the knees back down to the floor. Table pose. All right, we're going to take that balance here for the other side. You're going to straighten your left leg behind you this time, reaching straight through the knee and the right arm in front of you, finding one long line of energy. Feel those opposing directions, really balancing the effort in each direction. And then we're going to exhale and put the hand down and then lunge the left foot forward in between the hands or you can put them up on blocks. And let's slide the right knee a little farther back, getting nice and low in our lunge here, taking a few breaths. And then on an inhalation, reach the arms 
arms forward and up and come into your crescent lunge pose. Lifting your rib cage, gliding the arms back a little bit to arch your spine. On an exhalation, release the hands down and then rock your hips back toward the end of your mat and try to straighten your left leg for our half split. You can move your hands or blocks back as you lift the toes and press strongly down against the heel. And with an exhalation, return to your lunge. And now let's lift the back knee nice and high, tucking the toes and straightening that leg into our high lunge position. And from here, we're going to twist with the right hand down first, rotate from the waist, and raise the left arm. One more breath in. And exhale, left hand to the mat, and now twist to the other side. Rotate from your waist, raise the right arm, and lean back slightly. Good, look down, exhale, the right hand to the floor, and from here, step back into plank pose. Bring the legs together, find that shoulder over wrist alignment, and take five deep breaths. With your last breath out, bend the elbows and slowly lower to the ground. Point your toes and inhale to Cobra Pose. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, push up to the knees. Exhale, back and up into Downward Facing Dog. And again, just pedal the legs a few times here, rocking the hips side to side. And then look forward at your hands, inhale, exhale, step to the front of your mat. Take the hands to the shins and inhale to the flat back position. Exhale, fold forward and hang here over your legs. You can hold on to the elbows if you like, or the back of your ankles or calves. Feel your neck lengthen as the head draws down toward the floor. Good. Release your arms and we're going to inhale. Open them as you rise up and reach over your head to stand. Exhale, arms to your sides. Okay, we're going to come through a few rounds of sun salutation, starting at the very top of the mat in mountain pose. On your next breath in, reach the arms up. Exhale, dive forward over the legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, walk to plank. Take a deep breath in and exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or continue with cobra pose. Exhale, down dog. Take your time getting there. And then this time here in down dog, settle into relative stillness. You'll always notice some subtle motion in the body. And of course, there's the movement of the breath. So try and find steadiness through your limbs. One more breath in, look forward. As you breathe out, step to the hands. Inhale to your flat back position. Exhale, fold forward and release. Inhale, open the arms, rise up to stand. Exhale, release them. Second time through, inhale, 
reach up, exhale, fold forward, inhale, flat back, exhale, bend the knees and walk to plank. One breath here, exhale, slowly lower, inhale, up dog or cobra, exhale, down dog. Feel the opposing energies here. Upward direction through the hips, downward direction through the chest and the armpits. On your next breath in, look forward and breathe out, step to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, rise up to stand. Exhale, release your arms. Two more rounds. Inhale, begin. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank pose. One breath in. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Slow, steady breath. On your next inhalation, look forward. Exhale, step to the hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reaching overhead. Exhale, release the arms. Last round, inhale. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step to plank. Take one breath in and exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Stay here and breathe. The next time you inhale, look forward, exhale, step to the hands, inhale, flat back, exhale, forward bend, inhale, rise up, reaching over your head, and exhale, release the arms to your sides. <clears throat> Good, we're going to grab our blocks here. We're going to use the blocks to assist two standing poses that we're going to link together, pyramid pose and revolved triangle. So you're going to take your blocks in front of you. I usually put them on the highest position to start. You can always adjust them. Um, you can also use the seat of a chair for this pose. So if the blocks don't give you enough lift to help straighten your back, you can put a chair in front of you if you've got that. So you're going to stand with your feet hip width apart and then step your left foot back a couple of feet, not as wide as triangle pose, a little bit shorter. You want your back heel to completely touch the ground and both hip joints face forward, the legs are straight. Start to strengthen the muscles in your legs and bring your hands to your waist. Squeeze the shoulder blades back and then lean your upper body forward as the pelvis tilts, starting to send your tailbone back and keep your spine nice and straight. So you should start to feel a deep stretch in the hamstrings of the right leg. Holding that flat back position, take your hands down and find your blocks, move them closer to your body so that they're underneath your shoulders. Good, so take a few breaths here, keeping that active energy in the legs. And then optional here is a forward bend, letting your upper body come down toward the straight, the front leg rather. If this is too intense in your hamstrings or it doesn't feel good for your 
low back, then you can stay in the flat back position. Good, if you fold it forward, return to the flat back. So lift your chest, straighten your spine. From here, we're going to come into a revolved triangle. I'm going to take my left block a little closer to my front foot, which is the right one, and then bring the right hand to the waist and start to twist from the belly button, rotating the spine. And only if it's comfortable, reach your right arm up. It's a pretty challenging posture because of this twist. So if reaching the right arm up doesn't feel good in the shoulder, you can keep the hand at your waist the whole time. Just opening the side of the rib cage and the chest a bit. Good. Let's start to untwist the spine. So look down. Take that right hand to your block again. And then I'm just going to have you step your left foot forward to meet the right one. Bend the knees loosely and just hang over the legs in a loose forward bend for a moment. Let your neck release. You can even move your head a little bit back and forth. And then we're going to come up through a rag doll to stand. So keep the knees bent. Let your arms dangle down as you roll up through the spine. Once you're standing, draw the shoulders down and back. And just feel tall mountain pose. Good. When you're ready for the other side, we're going to step the right foot back now. Finding that slightly shorter stance than triangle pose, and the back heel is on the ground, hips face forward. Strengthen the legs, bring your hands to the waist, and guide your shoulders and elbows back. And then start to lean your upper body forward. Your whole pelvis rotates with that action, and your tailbone starts to stick back. Good. Keep the spine nice and straight and bring your hands down to your blocks beneath the shoulders, holding the flat back position here in pyramid pose. Just noticing how the stretch in the left hamstrings feels here. And again, it's totally optional to fold forward. So you can see how it feels lowering your upper body toward the front leg. If that's too much in the hamstrings or it doesn't feel good in your back, then just hold the flat back position instead. Good. If you fold it, we're going to return to the flat back, so lift your chest and straighten the spine. And from here to come into a revolved triangle, I'm going to move my right block just a little closer to the front foot. And then bring the left hand to the waist and start to twist using the strength of your abdominals to rotate the belly button to the left. Open the left side of the rib cage and the chest. Then only if it feels comfortable, raise the left arm up. If that feels stuck or if that interrupts your breathing in any way, then just keep the left hand at the waist. Let's take out the rotation, turn your upper body to face down, and take that left hand to the block again. And then we're just going to step the right foot forward to meet the left. You can move those blocks aside and just take a loose forward fold, bending your knees, hanging over the legs. From this forward bend, we're going to walk it out to downward facing dog. So walk your palms forward and your feet back and lift upward through the hips as you gently press downward through your chest and armpits. From this down dog, we're going to raise the right leg up into the air and inhale. Look forward, exhale, step that foot up in between the hands for a lunge position. Ground your back heel to the floor and come up to warrior two pose. The right arm forward and the left arm back. So 
find those opposing energies in the body. Feeling your front knee get nice and low and reach forward as your back knee straightens and extends toward the end of the mat. And then opposing energies through the arms. Your pelvis is drawing down toward the ground while the spine and the crown of the head lift upward. From here, we're going to lean back, taking the left hand to the straight leg and the right arm up toward the ceiling. And then exhale, take a gentle side bend as you reach the right arm over your face or reverse warrior two. Try and keep that deep bend in the front knee. Let's exhale and return to warrior two. Then look down at the ground, cartwheel the hands to the mat, lift your back heel up into the air so you're in a lunge, and then from here, step to plank. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, slowly lower down. Inhale to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. From here, raise your left leg up and inhale. Exhale, lunge that foot all the way up in between your hands. And then ground your right heel to the mat. Come on up to warrior two. Left arm forward, right arm back, finding all of those opposing directions in the body, balancing that effort. And then take your right hand down to the straight leg, raise your left arm up overhead, and exhale, start to lean back, taking a side bend in reverse warrior two, keeping that front knee deeply bent. The next time you exhale, return to warrior two, then look down at the ground, cartwheel the hands to the floor on either side of the front foot, Lift your back heel up and then step again to down dog. <clears throat> From this down dog, bend your knees back and forth, just pedaling the legs a little bit. And then let's bring the knees to the ground. Take a few breaths in child's pose. You can take the knees either close together or wide, whatever version of the pose you prefer arms forward or wrap around your legs. Close the eyes here. You take several deep breaths. You just check in with your body and notice how you feel right now. Here I'm going to have you lift yourself back up into table pose and we're going to work on some variations of plank and forearm plank. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a uh, side plank variation. So place the palms directly underneath the shoulders, step your legs back into plank pose, and then rotate your pelvis to the right side of your mat so that you come onto the outside edge of your left foot. And I still have both hands on the ground. Just work on the lower body first. Trying to stack the hips. Should be getting a stretch through the right side of the ribcage since we haven't lifted the hand yet. Really squeeze every muscle on the left side of your waist. And then we're going to slowly come off of the right hand and bring it to the hip. And then open the upper body. If you can, float the right arm up. Try to hold a few breaths here.
Good, release the right hand to the floor, rotate your pelvis down so you're in plank, and then lift up to down dog or take a break with the knees on the mat in table or child's pose. Good. return to plank pose when you're ready, feet and legs together, shoulders are over the palms, and we're going to rotate just the lower body, so turn your pelvis so it's open to the left side of your mat, and that's going to have you come to the outer edge of your right foot. Keep your left hand on the floor for a moment, just work on finding that opening the lower body and really contracting the right side of your waist, and then slowly come off of your left hand, Bring it to your left hip as you open the upper body now. And lastly, float the left arm up. Good, look down, release your left hand to the floor, turn the pelvis down so you're in plank, and lift up to down dog or rest with the knees down in table or child's pose. Good, if you're in down dog, you can bring your knees to the mat. Let's all come into table for a moment. In this table pose, I'm gonna have you flip your hands so that your palm faces up toward your face and you're on the back of the hands. Fingers point toward your knees. And just try and straighten the elbows and press the wrist into the ground. Just stretching all those little muscles. If you want a little more sensation here, you could lean your hips back toward your heels a little bit. We'll really kind of stretch into the front of the forearms. Good, and then release back to your regular hand position in table. Good, we're gonna work on forearm plank. Bring your elbows and forearms to the ground. Line your elbows so they're just shoulder width apart, and then clasp your fingers together. Tuck your bottom pinky finger into your palm so that you don't have pressure on that little bone. You're on the edge of the palms there. From here, step your feet back, straightening the legs, coming to forearm plank. Tuck your tailbone so that you can bring your hips level with the shoulders and feel your breastbone move forward toward your fist. Last breath in. Exhale, bring the knees to the mat. Sit back in child's pose. If you like, you can wrap your arms around the legs, just letting the shoulders relax. Try that one last time. So come on up into the table for a moment and then put your forearms and elbows down. Lining up the elbows so they're shoulder width apart. Clasp your fingers together, taking the bottom pinky finger in so that you're not resting on that bone. Slide the shoulder blades back and then step your legs back, tucking the toes. Squeeze your thighs together, tuck the tailbone a little bit. And now feel your breastbone move forward toward your fist to help straighten the upper back. Take a few breaths here in forearm plank. And then bring your knees to the mat. And again, rest in child's pose sitting back on your heels and wrapping the arms back if that's comfortable. Let your shoulders just melt down. Good. 
Good. When you're ready to come out, I'm going to have you reach your hands forward, lift up to table for a moment, but then lower your body all the way down to the ground. We're going to take some things that were done, opening the chest to help counter the effort that is in that area for planks. Take your palms outside of your chest, roll the shoulders back, and draw the elbows together, and then come into a high cobra pose, pressing the tops of the feet and ankles against the ground, Engaging your glutes to tuck the tailbone a little bit. Breathe nice and low into the abdomen. One more breath in. And exhale, roll down. Turn your head to one side and let your arms relax alongside of your body. Just take a few breaths here. And we'll take that one more time, forehead down, palms outside of the chest, squeeze the shoulders and elbows back, and roll up to a high cobra pose, elevating the rib cage and the chest. Feel the shoulder blades glide down toward your hips, opening up the front side of the body. One more breath in, and exhale, slowly lower. Turn your head to the other side, let your arms relax down alongside the body and melt the shoulders down into the floor. And then from here, I'm going to have you flip over to your back side. So just carefully roll yourself over. And we're going to take two rounds of bridge pose. Bend the knees. Lay your arms down alongside the body and tuck the shoulder blades closer together under your back. And then when you're ready, press against your feet, palms, and lift the hips and the ribcage nice and high into bridge. Take one more breath in, and exhale, roll your spine down to the floor. Separate the shoulders, take a few breaths here just to rest. And we're going to take this one more time, lay the arms down alongside the body, draw the shoulder blades together under your back to open your chest, and then lift up into bridge pose, pressing strongly against your feet and your palms. If it's comfortable to interlace the fingers, you can clasp them underneath you and straighten the elbows, tucking the shoulder blades a little closer together if you're doing that. One more breath in, and then slowly roll down, exhale. Separate the hands, separate the shoulders. Just let your upper body relax into the ground for a few breaths. And then I'm going to have you hug both of your knees into your upper body. Wrap the arms around your legs and rock a little from side to side. Just massaging the lower back and your sacrum. 
You can rock the knees around in circles if you like. And then we're going to come into happy baby pose. Separate the knees wider than your ribcage. Lift your feet and take the outer feet or outer ankles. If that doesn't feel good or if that's tight in the hips, then keep the feet down and just hold the shins. You can take some movement here if it feels good to rock a little back and forth or a little bit up and down the spine. Take one last deep breath in and exhale, lower the feet and release them. Good, let's keep the right knee in toward the body. Slide the left leg down onto the mat and then let's cross the right knee over for a reclined spinal twist. Your right arm will float out to the right side to counter the leg. And just gradually let that knee draw down toward the floor. You can give yourself a little adjustment by sliding your bottom hip over to the right just a little bit. When you're ready to release, gently unwind to your back. Bend both knees and adjust your hips so they feel centered below the shoulders. And then slide your right leg down to the ground. Bring your left knee in toward you and then cross it over your hips toward the floor. Keeping the left arm open out to the side to counter the energy of the leg. And if it feels good, you can adjust that bottom hip. Just scoot it over to the left side of the mat a little bit. When you're ready to unwind, gently return to your back. Bend both knees and adjust your hips so they feel centered below you. Take a few moments to let your spine and ribcage settle. And then from here, get comfortable for Shavasana, corpse pose. Once your body feels settled, let your arms and legs relax and gently close your eyes. Start to feel all the muscles in your face soften, especially those in the forehead and in your jaw. And take one last deep breath in through your nose and let it out through your mouth. And with that gesture, let your natural breath return to your body as you let go of that deep conscious breath now.
this pose, we let go of all physical and mental effort and allow our bodies and minds to rest.
slowly bring your attention back to the surface and lengthen your breath. When you feel ready, begin to move a little bit through the fingers and the toes and anywhere else that might feel good to you. And then bend your knees and roll over to one side of your body, curling up into a fetal pose. And just pause here briefly and notice how you feel right now. And stay with that feeling as you come upright, taking any comfortable seated pose. Once you're there, just take a moment to reconnect to your breath. Taking several deep cleansing breaths that fill the body. And we'll end our practice chanting OM one time. You can bring the palms together in front of your heart center. Take a deep breath in. Thank you.